Greetings, goddesses. It's Sarah, the green goddess. So I'm here in my garden on the edge of my garden, actually. Here's a view of my garden. It's the first week of August and it's, uh, it's a jungle out here, that's for sure. But what I wanted to bring your attention to today was just on the edge of my garden where we tend to walk quite often. The soil is pretty compact, uh, gravelly, rocky. It's, it's not good here. I have quite a little weed patch happening here. So this is the weed that, that I want to bring to your attention today, but I also just wanted to share with you some of the other things I see growing. So this is stinging nettle growing in amongst this herb here that we'll talk about today. Some more stinging nettle there. We also have some baby plantain growing here. And I have a lot of horsetail. This is horsetail. Um, You'll see it, it grows upright like this. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of horsetail. And then I let this uh, get a little bit out of control. This is red clover. And I always feel bad cutting it back. I try to leave it wherever I can because the pollinators sure love it. You will see the bees will frequent these beautiful clover flowers and dig in there and get all of the nectar and goodness out. You will also see on the edge here, we have more mature plantain. So if I zoom in a bit, you'll see the flowering headstalks here. So that's just a little, a little um, view of what's growing, what weeds are growing in my garden. In fact, the one that we're gonna talk about today, which is this one when I zoom in, it particularly loves poor compacted soils. So what is this weed that I'm talking about? Have you seen it before? Okay, this is called pineapple weed. And as I said, it loves compacted soils. You will find it growing along your driveway, especially on the edges, and it will even start growing right into the rocks. And it will even go along the road, uh, in the ditch, uh, you know, right on the edge of the road, on the roadsides, because it just loves heavily compacted soil. So pineapple weed gets its name pineapple from the glorious aroma that it emits when you brush up against a plant or um, take one of the heads and squeeze it between your fingers. If you squish that or if you go over this plant with your mower, um, even if you just brush up against it, sometimes you'll suddenly smell <sighs> pineapples. It's so lovely. It's such a sunny, bright, refreshing, energizing aroma, but also feels soothing and calming too. It's really quite glorious. I wanted to share with you an interesting tidbit that I don't, I don't know if you would know, but in my herb garden, I'm also growing German chamomile. And that's this little happy, sunny, go lucky plant right here, this flower. And you will notice a striking similarity between the, the way that the heads look. So as you can see on the left, we have our pineapple weed, which is more of a greeny yellow color. And of course the chamomile in my hand here has that really classic yellow center. But the flower bud itself is really similar in appearance, is it not? Um, but one of the main distinguishing factors between the two is that the chamomile will always have these lovely white little petals around it and the pineapple weed won't. But pineapple weed is wild chamomile. That's actually what it is. So we have German chamomile here and we have wild chamomile here. And so if you don't take it upon yourself to go out of your way and plant chamomile every year in your herb garden, then why not make use of the, the plentiful, beneficial, uh, abundant pineapple weed that grows on its very own will right in your garden and your driveway and such. Um, so what can we use pineapple weed for? Well, very similarly to German chamomile, its medicinal, its medicinal properties 
are are almost identical. Um, but I have read in my herbal books that pineapple weed tends to be a little more mild in action than the true chamomile. But the way that we use chamomile, and you might be familiar with drinking a cup of chamomile tea at the end of the day to unwind or relax or help you to lull into a peaceful slumber, the same benefits can be found with pineapple weed. So our family likes to pick the heads and we will dehydrate them and we will store them in a glass mason jar with the lid on through the winter months and when we're missing summer or when we're having a particularly rough day in our home maybe it's a not so fun homeschooling day or maybe one of the kids is just feeling a bit down and out or maybe the energy in the home is feeling just not so pleasant a little bit frazzled um, if there's any you know nervous exhaustion or fatigue or stress then that's when we will reach for our wild chamomile or pineapple weed tea. It tastes lovely. Children adore the flavor. It's really um, gentle but um, kind of fruity. So, so it's a lovely tea, especially with a little bit of honey for children. And the wonderful thing about the chamomile family and the pineapple weed is that it's safe for all ages and stages. So we're talking about even infants. Even infants can benefit. If a, if a mother drinks a lot of this tea while she's breastfeeding, her infant can benefit from the medicinal properties in this tea. And so let's get into some of the more specific medicinal properties. So speaking of infants, this is a wonderful uh, tea to indulge in if your infant is suffering with colic or fussiness, gassiness, just if they're just a miserable little creature because of whatever reason, this is a lovely tea to, to give them a teaspoon or so um, and then make sure that the mother who is breastfeeding is drinking a lot of it or even if you're not breastfeeding and you're just stressed out because life is tough when your children are miserable, then this will help the mother as well to feel more calm. Um, it has antispasmodic properties in it and so it has been used to help relieve menstrual cramping and that is what is helping with the with the infants or people or, and adults alike who are experiencing digestive discomfort so if you're having even as an adult gas or nausea or bloating you can make yourself a cup of this tea um, it has some anti-inflammatory properties in it as well and I, but I think the main, the really thing where chamomile shines is, is actually, it's in its Latin name. The, the, the Latin name for chamomile is matricaria. And matrix means mother and caria means deer. So deer mother. So this plant has been known since time immemorial to be the plant of choice for women and their children or women and their babies because it is so good at um, just helping any disharmony that exists between that um, that bond that we should have with our children. You know, if, if that is lacking or there is some sort of disharmony between mother and child, then this is the plant that we always reach for. So it's a really great one to get to know if you're a mama with young children. Um, but it is a wonderful tea to use at night to help promote sleep. You know, if your home just felt like it was just a little bit too stressful or you had a bad day at work, this is the perfect tea to indulge in at the end of the day. Um, I've also read herbalists who like to use the heads themselves and they'll put them in a salad. Apparently they're not super delicious just, you know, munching on them on their own. But um, if you were to make a tea and a strong tea, you could use that liquid in your smoothies or you could use it in baking, in, in any water portion of your baking. But I also have heard of herbalists who actually use the heads themselves in their muffins or breads, cookies and baking and things like that. What else do I want to say? You'll also notice that the leaves are quite fern-like, so it's pretty easy to identify this plant, but of course you can message me and let me know if you're unsure. Take a picture and I would be happy to have a look at it. And But honestly, as soon as you take one of these little 
flowering heads and you squish it and you smell your fingers, it's going to smell like this a sweet apple or pineapple. It's so beautiful. Um, try to pick the, the buds when they first open. Um, you can pick them all throughout the summer, but it is best when they first open. You're going to notice some of them are past their prime. Let me show you here. This one has started to get loose and lose its little flowering bud head. Whereas this one next to it hasn't. So I would pick these and I would dehydrate them. But if they've gone too far along in their life cycle, then they just kind of disintegrate and they'll fall apart. When you dehydrate them, you might notice there's just a bunch of little, little bits instead of like an actual head still. Okay. So just be aware of that and try not to pick it when it's too hot outside because there are a lot of beautiful volatile oils in here, like your essential oils. And if you pick this plant when it's beating hot outside, then some of those essential oils have been lost. They're, they're evaporated. Um, so pick them at cool times of the day, you know, just when the, in the morning, when the dew has, um, evaporated from plants but before the sun really starts beating too hot on you and if you ever make tea with it then always cover your tea uh, to keep those volatile oils inside of your tea and keep as much of the medicinal goodness inside your beverage as possible okay I think that oh and the other thing I wanted to say was that um, we have studied extensively in science the, the benefits of chamomile, but not so much the pineapple weed. So herbalists at this stage are just um, assuming, you know, it makes stands to reason that the pineapple weed, because it is so closely related, it's a, it's a cousin to the chamomile, that it has many of the same benefits. So, um, and, and we are assuming that it is high in vitamin A and vitamin C and it has minerals like calcium and magnesium and potassium, okay? Um, so yeah, if you read any accounts of chamomile um, for years and years and years, for a long, long time, herbalists just adore this plant for its many wonderful uses. And its nickname is often the gentle giant because it really can make wonderful, beautiful lasting change in your life once you get to know this plant and use it frequently but it does so in a very gentle way where we don't have to be concerned about contraindications unless of course you have an allergy to the plant itself and it is also related to the sunflower and the daisy and so if you have um allergies in that aster uh, what's it called asteraceae family or asteraceae family i think it is then um, this could cause problems for you as well but other than that it's a very safe herb to work with i think it would make really good popsicles too we've done sleepy time popsicles in our home and i feel like these would make wonderful um, sleepy time popsicles too so there you have it goddesses i hope that was helpful and it inspires you to get out into your yard and look and see what you have growing around you and and at the very least make sure you pick one of these beautiful heads and give it a whiff um, be careful though because your kids uh, love the aroma so much that and and the buds are often just the perfect size to get lost up in their nostril and I know that from experience because it happened to my son who loved smelling this and he put it up to his nose and just basically shoved it right up there and it just never came out so um, that was a little bit uh, interesting experience um, but um, he's fine and it's all good so just just know that that's something that happened to our family so anyways wishing you many green blessings and um, I'm always here if you have any questions comments or concerns make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with somebody especially those young frazzled mothers out there with young babies who are looking for uh, any ways to help them bring about some calm and peace in their home. All right, talk to you again. Bye.